Welcome to Under the Microscope. This series is brought to you by the Real Scientists Nano team. Our goal is to provide a platform where scientists can communicate their work and interact with the public. With that in mind, every week we introduce you to a scientist working in the field of materials and nanoscience. Today we have with us uh, Upali Devasekere, who is a researcher at University of Auckland in New Zealand and is also co-founder of Real Scientists. Um, hi Upali, how are you doing? Hi Pranati, how are you? It's great to be here. Um, I'm good, I'm good. I'm, I'm really excited to take a deep dive into your science um, with you on this podcast. Um, so let's start by understanding your uh, scientific journey so far. So how did you end up in your current research field? So I've uh, pretty much worked as a research assistant quite a lot, but as a, you know, sort of a research heavy research assistant for mm -hmm. many, many years since I finished uh, honours in, in, um, in Melbourne. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's taken me on a journey through all kinds of research from parasitology to material science to cancer immunology, fruit fly research. Yes. Uh, and then for my doctorate, I end up working in nanotechnology and drug delivery. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently working in, working in uh, endometriosis, which is really, really interesting. Uh, and I ended up in endometriosis partly because it's a really fascinating subject it's a, it's a fascinating field of research it's a, a disease that affects 10 to 15 percent of women around the planet mm -hmm. and uh, there's a uh, there's a potential role for nanotechnology in treating it mm -hmm. uh, and I'm also sort of currently writing my thesis on nanotechnology and drug delivery okay uh, that's that's really interesting you so you have touched upon a lot of interesting um, niche feel, so to say, um, including fruit flies. Um, yes. Well, I, I, I'd say that fruit flies are definitely not niche, but uh, but uh, it, it was really wonderful to kind of work on um, that particular mm -hmm. model organism because they're really fascinating and surprisingly beautiful. Fruit flies, beautiful. I would not um, have expected that in one sentence. Ne neither did I. And when I started out, I was just like, well, they are a little bit gross. You know, they're those tiny flies that might be feasting on your fruit. You know, they're just these little black dots that are in your way or the corner of your eye. But when you, you know, you can actually knock them out with carbon dioxide. And that's how we examine them under the microscope. And when you do, you realise they're actually spectacular, you know. So hmm. anyway, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's move on to the next, uh, next uh, question, which is... Um, um, so you mentioned that you're working, uh, you're writing your uh, thesis right now, Rika, about nanoscience in the field of nanoscience and uh, also working on endometriosis. Uh, so um, where does your current research uh, fall in this big picture of materials or nanoscience? Well, I'll talk about my doctoral work. Uh, and my doctoral work is, uh, as, as, as I mentioned before, it's primarily about drug delivery and generating nanoparticles for very targeted and specific drug delivery. So basically, I am looking at ways to deliver drugs to very particular kinds of cells in the body. I don't want to, you know, the, you know when, you, when you're given uh, a treatment, uh, you might have to take a pill uh, and or you might have an injection, and that means that the drug kind of courses through your whole bloodstream uh, mm -hmm. which is normal because how else is it going to get to where it needs to go? Uh, and right. when you do this for something like chemotherapy in treating cancer, it means mm -hmm. that rather than just going to the cancer cells or concentrating largely in the cancer cells, which is what would be ideal, it goes throughout the body. And because a chemotherapy tends to target rapidly growing cells because cancer cells are a rapidly growing cell mass, uh, mm -hmm. it means it will also affect other rapidly growing uh, cells in the body so that's why you have such a, a you know humans have such a strong reaction to chemotherapy you know you lose your hair uh, you can lose your appetite and and, it, and it's very difficult to go through chemotherapy so mm -hmm. 
what what my work is interested in doing, uh, and along with many others, is delivering uh, drugs like chemotherapies or some gene therapies. In my case, my work is primarily on delivering um, uh, gene therapies through the form of short interfering RNAs uh, mm -hmm. to specific specifically disease cells. So mm -hmm. we try to generate a particle. We want to attach uh, the deliver, you know, the drug on it. So whatever that might be, whether it's a gene therapy or a chemotherapy or any other kind, an antibody, for instance. Mm -hmm. Then we want to be able to target it so that most of those cells, even if they, most of those particles rather, even if they go through the whole body, a lot of them will congregate and you know end up in say. The, in the disease tissue, so say, for example, in cancer tissues. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, that sounds, that, that that is actually really, really interesting. And I think I get a picture of where does your research fit in this big puzzle of materials and nanoscience. So it sounds to me that you did a lot of, uh, or you are also doing a lot of interesting research projects, um, have done in the past as well with the, the wide um range of um, experiences you've had. So if you have to pick one research project that you're most proud of or the most fun or quirky one, um, could you could you pick one? I know it's very difficult because your research has been really interesting. Um, could you pick one and explain it to us in simple words uh, in the section we call In Other Words? Okay, so I've talked about how I've primarily worked in cancer research and, you mm -hmm. know, it's either molecular genetics or cancer immunology and they're all sort of related to each other because it's it turns out that the immune system can be involved in detecting and controlling cancers and it's when a whole bunch of systems in the body breaks down, like a whole bunch of checking systems when um, they don't function correctly that you end up with cells that keep growing out of control. Mm -hmm. So what I found the most interesting uh, was instead of just, I don't want to say it's just, but I, usually I've, I've done research into the biology of a cancer cell. But I had mm -hmm. the opportunity to work on the uh, on a therapy for cancers, so particularly for breast cancers, and it turned out that it was useful in treating prostate cancers as well. And we were looking at an antibody therapy that was targeting a very specific uh, gene product and it was a non-traditional gene product, I mean, a non-traditional drug target for cancer therapies. So mm -hmm. basically, I got to work on understanding the cancer a bit and also on actually generating a therapy. And the therapy worked in vitro and in vivo. And that was just amazing because what I would do was, you know, sometimes I had to work on animal models. Uh, and I, my whole life, I tried to avoid working with with certain kinds of animal models, you know, I was okay, I was sort of okay with yeast, I was okay with um, fruit flies, but when it got to mice, I was just like, oh, if I can avoid it, I will. Mm -hmm. I ended up in this lab where we looked at the immunology uh, of, of this particular uh, form of cancer, and then we tried using uh, this antibody directed against the, a, a gene product, mm -hmm. uh, and it was amazing because I'd have to give the model a, a sort of a, a tiny tumor and it was one just under the skin so mm -hmm. um, you would treat it and you could measure how much it grew or shrank and it was wow. extraordinary to me to watch this therapy work and actually shrink the tumors and I was doing this uh, research in a cancer hospital at the Peter McCallum mm -hmm. Cancer Center uh, right. cancer Institute and so I you know every morning I would walk through the hospital to get to the research labs and sometimes there would be kids or elderly people or whatever, you know, there'd be cancer patients and you could see the effect of chemotherapies on them. And, you know, it was just, it was harrowing. And then I got to also see this thing actually work and it was amazing. And so it was like, well, I finally feel like I'm contributing, <laughs> you know, it was, it, and it was, it's breathtaking because when you're studying cancer, you can see how the cells grow. They grow like crazy. And it's, mm -hmm terrifying to to watch it because you can't see it happening in real time in your body if you have mm -hmm. cancer but right. and in the lab and so the fact that there was a really meaningful way to to alter it basically I you know in other words I made an immunotherapy uh, I worked on an immunotherapy and 
it worked and it was amazing. And that's probably the thing I'm most proud of doing. And we didn't end up carrying on all the research all the way, but we started the process of making a therapy. Mm -hmm. That work is now in uh, clinical trials, and I think it's heading to phase two, being done by another research group. Uh, mm -hmm. And so then I decided to continue on with the therapy thing. And so first we developed a therapy, and then my doctoral work is in trying to figure out how I can better deliver therapies. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's really interesting. I, I can understand completely why you chose to talk about this project that you're most proud of, because it's fascinating that you, you did the, the the research in the lab and then you could see real life effect as well uh, in the real world uh, which 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 is really great and it's great to know also that that particular project is now reached uh, the clinical trial phase or the phase two however uh, we call it that's 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 wonderful um, Great. I hope you can elaborate a bit more on that uh, when you are curating the Real Scientist Nano account. Um, Definitely. And if people want to know more about it, please do let me know. I know the account is mostly about material science, nanoscience, which I will add, I also love. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you do want to know about these things, I'm more than happy to talk about them. Okay. I'm, I'm sure people people are interested in talking about it. I mean, considering that the, the, the cells are usually, the dimensions of cells are usually in micro or nano, or, well, mostly micro level, I think it still fits the, the, the nano or micro part of the of the account. So please go ahead and talk about that as well on the, on the Twitter account. Oh, for sure. Um, <laughs> All right, wonderful. Um, so I hope uh, that your your research experience so far has been wonderful and will continue to be wonderful in the future as well. Um, however, if you had three wishes to improve your research experience, uh, what would you ask for? And I'm not promising anything here. <laughs> well, what would I ask for to improve in scientific, scientific research? I think maybe having longer grants uh, you know, that where the funding isn't just for one year or so, so mm -hmm. that you have the time to kind of establish some work, to do enough work to really know if you can answer the question. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that there's some degree of security, at least for a year, for two years or three years or something. Uh, mm -hmm. That is something that I would really like to see. And I know that definitely in Australia, they are considering five-year grants. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's important for that sort of thing for... Uh, early career researchers as well, uh, not just for senior uh, academics, because it does take time to establish things. And I, and, and my doctoral supervisors would say, you know, I don't feel that this, in Australia, we do a PhD over, generally speaking, you know, three and a half to four years, mm -hmm. and uh, full time, that is. And there is room for extension, but not as much as there used to be. And mm -hmm. so, my supervisors would say, look, I, I, we prefer the American system where you have time to establish a really good body of work. Mm -hmm. And so I'd sort of like to see that happen when it comes to the postdoctoral level as well, um, or even mm -hmm. at the assistant level. If you know, it, it will help PIs, it will help postdocs, it will help research staff. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. The second thing, I guess, is uh, I would really like to see students being taught how to do science. I think a lot of students tend to go through science where we're not necessarily taught very good practice, like we're not necessarily taught good lab practice. Uh, mm -hmm. And fortunately, you know, many institutions are, are going pretty hard, and certainly in Australia and New Zealand, in my experience, in making sure that safety is of paramount concern, that people think about what they're going to do, their experiment, and um, make sure that they're reducing the uh, amount of dangerous chemicals or pro procedures that they need to use. Because as you know, in material science, there's a lot of, you know, sort of uh, etching using HI and things like that. And so mm -hmm. bringing in practices for that is really important. Okay, so maybe that's number two is actually about safety. <laughs> but, yeah. and, but really, and, and that ties into number three, I suppose, which is just teaching uh, people. A lot of people will learn things implicitly uh, and a lot of things are unspoken, I guess. But I think it would be nice to have some sort of explicit teaching of, of students as they go through, whether whatever level they're at as, as undergrads or uh, as master's students or PhD students. And it's things like, you know, learning how to write particular kinds of scientific documents, mm -hmm. 
and being advised in a meaningful way about that. And, and I have a really terrific PI who's who's helping me with that at the moment um, because it, I, I just didn't really end up learning properly in, in, in many ways. Uh, and so, you know, learning how to write papers and, and, and theses, but also really making sure that you know all the things that you need to know, like stats, uh, knowing how to carry yourself in a lab and how not to waste things in the lab and all that sort of thing. So I think those are the three things that I would really like to see change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's that's actually a very, very fair points that you, you mentioned, all three of your uh, all three of your wishes, so to say. And I hope that uh, we, are, we are the scientific community as a whole is working towards achieving all those, um, including the, the, the duration of the of the research uh, grants, the safety and the scientific uh, or the lab. Um, how would you call it? Lab? Um, I guess culture? it's like that. It's it's training, scientific training, maybe. Scientific the way training. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I hope we are working towards it. Um, uh, speaking of the future, uh, what are you most looking forward to in the next three months? <laughs> what I'm looking forward to most is to getting a, a, a substantial chunk of my thesis finished uh, <laughs> in a really meaningful way because I have I kind of have all the chapters, but they're not, you know, like... <laughs> Re in, in a really good state, in a state that would make me happy. So I hope that I can at least get um, half of it done to a final standard. And I'm also really looking forward to submitting a paper on endometriosis. I, I hope I can get it done in the next uh, uh, three months at the latest, if not sooner. Okay, that's uh, that sounds uh, like a lot of writing and a lot uh, of figures and plots and rewarding and I wish you a lot of strength because I've been there. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Um, and before we let you go, Philly, what we want to understand from you is um, what are the big challenges uh, or questions that the field of materials or nanoscience is facing at the moment? What are the big questions that uh, the scientists are trying to answer or overcome the challenges. Okay, so I guess in, um, in terms of what, what big questions and, and, and in no particular order, um, one of the things I think is a big concern is, again, going back to safety, which is how we dispose of uh, products and, and items that are you know, developed at the nanoscale. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I worked with gold nanoparticles, and so we had to make sure that we disposed of them in a safe manner. And the great thing about gold is that you can retrieve it quite easily. But mm -hmm. making sure that, you know, we don't want to have people tipping things down the sink and making sure that we have some good processes in place for nanoparticles and, and that sort of research, um, because it's, it's a brand new field. It's really, really new. Um, mm -hmm. The other big questions are, you know, I'm a molecular biologist, and... While I've worked with a lot of, you know, different kinds of cells, I've worked with parasites and uh, cancer cells and different kinds of immune cells. Mm -hmm. the, as, you, as you mentioned before, they're at the micron scale, whereas nanotech is at the nano scale. And they're at the scale of actual biological molecules. Mm -hmm. and that's something that really fascinates me about nanoscience is that we're creating an artificial world in response, it's, it's like we're, we're recreating life, but in in silico or, uh, you know, in situ, as it were, rather than using biological agents. And that's really fascinating. So it'll be interesting to see what the limitations of that are. And I think the fact that, you know, every every month or so, there's some new development or breakthrough in, in generating different kinds of particles and different kinds of nanomaterials you can you can get nano lenses and things like that that's yeah. amazing and, and I, i'm really looking forward to this miniaturization of of the world because it will be really useful in space travel and space exploration mm -hmm. um, but it will also be you know valuable and useful in studying the planet that we live on the and the ocean uh, and so that's what i'm you know that's one of the areas i guess it's not really a question uh, but the other thing is, yeah, so what are the limitations of nanoscience and uh, what can we do? What are the great things that we can do with nanoscience that mm -hmm. will make people's lives better? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I. Uh, that's that's actually quite interesting that you mentioned. You you managed to to tie. Um, let's say, uh, drug discovery or delivery and uh, space travel. I, I love that. It's, 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 amazing. Uh, it's amazing. Well, you know, my, it, it's, uh, I'm always trying to tie my great loves in science together <laughs> wherever possible. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I've spoken to sort of people who are working in those sorts of fields because, you know, ultimately nanoscience is material science and material science is a cornerstone of developing technology to go into space. Um, or else, you know, we just can't do it. We've had to, you know, NASA and other organisations have had to develop entirely new materials and instruments to uh, carry out space exploration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I completely agree with you on that. Um, so thank you, Pili, for, for uh, speaking with us. Uh, it has been wonderful and I've learned a lot of new things. And uh, we are looking forward to having you on the Real Scientist Nano Twitter account. Well, thank you so much again for inviting me. Uh, it was really great to talk to you. Um, I, as, as you can see, if I, I can't shut up about science. <laughs> so if you're, <laughs> you know, if, you're, if you're part of the audience of, you know, real nanoscientists, please, you know, <laughs> feel free to ask me I'm, um, and, and at your peril because I may not shut up. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to uh, engaging this week. Wonderful. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for listening. To know more about us, please visit our website, realscientistsnano.org and follow us on Twitter at realsci underscore nano.